Hi guys, Steve here, back in the shop. Been a little bit since I published some videos, but I'm back at it. Today I'm releasing a uh, two-part series. This is part one on uh, rib case gearboxes. And so I'm gonna show you all my tips and all my little tricks. I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a gearbox for a Sprite or an MG Midget. And now I'm gonna be building one for a race car, so it's a straight cut close ratio box, but everything I do is going to apply to a street application, so uh, just watch it if you're working on one of those. I'm also going to be uh, breaking this uh, video, or both of them, up into chapters, so if you get stuck on something or need to watch something over and over again and don't quite know where it is in the video, just go down to the description and there'll be little time markers. There should also be one the way YouTube does, just puts it on the, on the bottom of the timeline. You just scroll over to the section you need and uh, so let's get started. Let's build together. So let's get started. Uh, you know, the first thing is, uh, obviously I've got the gearbox completely apart. And so if you haven't accomplished that yet, uh, you know, watching this video should help you uh, learn. Uh, if you can put it together, you can certainly take it apart. So maybe down the road, I will uh, uh, put one together where I'm taking the gearbox completely apart. So here in my hand, I'm holding the first motion shaft, which also has fourth gear attached to it. It's a, you know, one solid piece. This is what uh, is dr driving the entire dr uh, gear gearbox uh, through the clutch assembly. Those are the clutch splines, and that's where the uh, uh, drive, the first motion shaft goes up into the tail of the crankshaft, where your, where your spigot bearing is. Uh, so uh, I laid out here are all the gears. There's the uh, lay gear and the reverse gear. And we're going to try to uh, walk you through this just briefly before we start the assembly. So you've got the main shaft here and uh, then all the gears. So there's fourth gear. Okay, so that's fourth gear. That's third gear. And this is second gear. And this is First gear, but it also was mount. First gear is mounted on a synchro hub, so it's sitting there too. So there they are: one, two, three, and four. Okay, so two, three, and four. Okay, so uh, and then this is the lay shaft, uh, and we'll show you how to mount that in the case and space everything appropriately uh, down the road. This is the reverse idler gear, and we'll show you how to put that in the case later on too. Uh, so I'm going to set those aside for the moment. So you'll notice the lay gear goes from large to small, okay? And then the regular gear set goes uh, the opposite direction from large on uh, that end. First gear is larger and then fourth gear is smaller. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about how to assemble some of this. And I want to talk about the, th the most complicated piece, which is the third and the second gear assembly, which includes these locking rings that are effectively uh, thrust washers, uh, these small uh, cylinders and springs, and the lead needle bearings. It's all a bit of a complicated process, and that's where we want to go right now so we can get started with the assembly process. Okay, so the first assembly we're going to tackle is second gear. And we're going to mount it onto the main shaft. I have it laying here on my workbench. And the second gear mounts here against this built-in separator. Second gear sits here, third gear sits here. And these are the roller bearing surfaces. Okay. And second gear is locked into place on this uh, main shaft cog here. Okay. And it's done, uh, we're going to use this hole here to put these little uh, cylinders and spring into. It's part of the locking mechanism. And we're going to install all this. I'm going to show you. And first thing I want to talk about is uh, what I've got here laying on my workbench. This is what I'm going to use to put that gear on. Is some really small picks and, and screwdrivers. Uh, I'm going to mark a couple things in. You definitely need some grease. Sometimes I need a little pair of pliers. Sometimes I need a bigger screwdriver. And uh, oh, uh, sometimes I need a little hammer. So that's my tool set. So I'm just going to basically clamp the main shaft into my vise here and, uh, and then we'll get started. Mm -hmm. 
So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is clamp the uh, main shaft in the vise. I've got something here to kind of soften it a little bit, a rag in the vise, because I don't want to mar the surface of the uh, main shaft. And I've got all my tools and everything laid out there. So I lined up uh, the shaft so that the hole that goes through the shaft goes basically uh, you know, right to left so that I can work on it. And this is where grease is your friend. So I'm going to lather up uh, the seating surface for the needle uh, bearings. <clears throat> and then I, I, of course, I need something to wipe my hands off with here. So, which I forgot to lay out uh, when I made the video here. So just bear with me momentarily. And then I'm going to start putting these needle bearings on there and I'm not going to make you watch me do that at slow speed here so I'm about to kind of advance the video but you want to line them up nice and straight and even and uh, there we go kind of pick up the pace on the video here and get them all nice and neat until you have it kind of all on there and uh, in, a, in a nice neat position like this and then you'll be able to slip the bearing over the top of it. So the next thing you want to do is put the little spring and the two cylinders into the hole. I like to do it at this moment in time because I find it easier than to try to do it later after the gear is on there. Uh, but you know, you don't necessarily have to, but this is my preference. Now be sure and put the two little cylinders in with the, the little pointy uh, smaller ends in on the spring. It's made to fit that way. And then I line up those two cylinders such that uh, they're more or less even with the needle bearings. And I simply slip the uh, gear over. Now this is second gear we're working on. So I just line it up nice and neat. First, here I am. Uh, and uh, sometimes I have to use my fingers and just kind of nudge those cylinders down. But I'm very slow and patient here, and I'm trying to not knock any of those needle bearings off, and it should just slip right down, and there you go. Now we have to put uh, the half washers, the uh, thrust washers that are half washers in there. So I will just slip them in, and then you have to arrange them in the right position uh, so I'm just going to work them in and I'm going to pick up one of my little tools, just pick the one I, I kind of feel like is the right one. And I'm going to arrange it to where the shape, uh, if you noticed on these half uh, washers, uh, I want to line up the little tab underneath those cylinders. And I'm going to show you that here in a moment about how that goes together. So. Uh, I'm going to take a break here and show you that right now. So to better explain what I'm doing is, you see these two half washers? Those are the ones I just put in there. Well, this is the retaining clip. And you'll notice that the tabs on the half washers fit on the bottom side of the retaining clip. And this is how you hold, this is basically how the thing's held together. So uh, it's important that you align those cylinders with these two slots that are already machined into the bottom of the retaining clip. I'm going to point those out to you here. And uh, uh, it's going to fit up in this lip right there. And that's where those tabs go, is in these two slots, so that uh, it will all fit together into one unit. So this is why I'm taking some time to align those tabs where they're right underneath those two little cylinders and uh, line up perfectly so that we can put this thing together the easiest way possible. I'm going to take a small screwdriver and I'm going to push one of the cylinders in until it's even and flush with that raised edge right there. You see that raised edge? I'm going to push it at flush. And I'm not going to push it in too far because if I do, it'll 
come all the way out because you know the spring is in the center there so I need a little gap between the gear and the face of the other cylinder and then I'm simply going to slip the retaining ring over the top okay and I'm going to align those two slots that are machined into the bottom of that retaining ring right over the tabs and right over those cylinders okay so I'm gonna zoom in here really close so you can see everything very good and see what's going on because we're about to basically make this ring stay lock into place so you can see I got a small screwdriver and uh, you can see where the placement of the ring is over those cylinders now my fingers will move back and forth now what I'm doing here is I'm holding one side down and I'm pressing in on the other cylinder on the other side. Basically the ring will hold one cylinder in place. That's why you kind of aligned it with uh, further back up into the main shaft and then you're going to push the other one against the other string. Now it's hard to do. If you need a really skinny screwdriver here uh, and you need a, a lot of put a lot of pressure on it that's why you may have seen some of my tools have a little uh, blue towel taped on the end of it because I put a lot of pressure on it to compress that spring and it can be very frustrating here because they pop and snap and and then it'll finally slip and you see right there it's slipped down now I'm not there yet I'm not quite there because in the process of this I moved those little half washers and the tabs aren't completely aligned so I'm shifting them around so you have to have a really small tool to do this uh, that's why I have a selection of tools and sometimes you have to tap on things that's why I have my little hammer and I'm gonna get the screwdriver out here and kinda tap on it here and there and it'll finally slip all the way down you see it there it slipped all the way down now it's time to rotate it so you'll see me rotate it here and you'll rotate it part way and this cylinder will pop out but you're not finished yet if you look on the other side you can rotate it a little bit more okay and so you just keep rotating it until it completely snaps into place gently kind of moving it and there it is you're done you have now successfully installed uh, second gear onto the main shaft and I took a picture so you can see both sides are snapped into place. So now we have second gear locked onto the main shaft. Uh, it's going to spin freely. You can see how it's locked into place with the locking ring. Uh, but before we moved on to third gear, uh, I wanted to talk to you about a couple little tricks I did there that I didn't capture in the first part of the video. You can see some red marks there and I want to show you that because it helps me a lot. This is this is where uh, third gear is going to go. We're going to talk about that next. Uh, but let me show you a couple of tricks in the tools I was using there. Drivers, this is a plain Jane screwdriver that I was using but this is the one that's uh, key and what I did was I took a small Allen wrench screwdriver, and I'm sorry it's blurry there, the thing will focus here in a second, and I ground it down really flat. I just took it on a sander, and I ground the end of it down. You see how skinny it is, how small this is. And sometimes you have to make tools, and that's what you need uh, on this job. So these are the two screwdrivers. Uh, I use them religiously on this job and you'll see how I padded the end of them trust me it takes a lot of pressure to compress these springs I'm sure you'll develop your own tools so you may have noticed a couple of red lines that I have on the main shaft uh, it's marking where the little cylinders are located uh, when you put the locking ring down at first you can't really see those little cylinders anymore so this is just a suggestion I have for you to mark that main shaft so you can keep track of them and until you get the thing locked into place where you see them again. 
Now we're going to move on to installing third gear and these are the bits you need. You have the gear, the locking ring, the little cylinder, there's only one in this case, and then a spring and uh, the needle bearings. Now I'm showing you the locking ring there. It's also a, uh, a thrust bearing and it locks onto these splines uh, that are on the other end of the main shaft uh, the butt up next to second gear. So uh, we're going to show you how that goes together. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you just the components are uh, what I've got laid out here. And uh, let's, so let's just get started and put, a, put them on the main shaft. So this is a very similar exercise as before. And I'm going to speed it up here because you've already seen this done once. So I dropped one of them that's going to happen to you and I'm going to kind of get all these lined up just like before. It's very much similar exercise as what you did on uh, uh, the uh, second gear, but we're working on third gear now. So uh, we're about done and I kind of got them all lined up there now. Okay, so I'm back to normal speed on the video and uh, I'm going to do the, some, the same thing. Uh, here I'm just showing you how they line up. Now, this uh, part of the main shaft only has one hole in one side of the main shaft because you you it's it's to accept this spring and the one little cylinder uh, that locks that ring in place. It's just, it's designed different than the other one, and so I do the same thing as I just put it uh, put the spring in, put the little locking pin, uh, a locking cylinder in there. And then, uh, so I'm gonna show you here kind of how it looks. There's only a hole in one side. It doesn't go all the way through. And that's how it should look. And then, uh, then we're just gonna slip the gear over. So here's third gear. And I'm gonna do this very same thing I did before. Just gonna be very patient and careful here. And it should just slide right on. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is to put the locking ring on and I'm just kind of showing you a close-up shot of how that should look so that you understand uh, what you're looking at here. So now let's put the locking ring on and here it is. It's got an oiling groove on the back side and a little hole uh, to help you turn the locking ring and I'm going to use that little skinny uh, really thin uh, a tool I made out of an Allen wrench and this is this is gonna work exactly the same way as before you're gonna push down on one side and then push that uh, uh, pin in now this is this is a very narrow spot and that's why you have to have a really thin tool here and one that's strong enough and you're gonna see me here in the video I don't get it the first time I think I have three or four attempts now I'm not going to make you watch this. This is why I have this little pair of pliers so that I can get that cylinder back up in there because it kind of, the spring pops it out. And uh, I'm going to speed the video up here momentarily. And you can watch me make, I think, another three attempts at locking this in. And uh, so, you know, on these things, you just have to be very patient and slow and deliberate. And it doesn't always work the way you want it to. And so you're going to take the thing on and off a number of times until you just kind of get it done. If you try to try to force this uh, until it until it just you know you can't force these things, so don't even attempt to force it. Just be patient, keep working at it, and you'll get there. And here I've slowed it down again because I think on this attempt uh, it's going to go in, and I finally get it kind of happy. And yeah, so there it clicked. I could tell it clicked. I'm going to use the little hammer and kind of tap it down in place and then I'm going to use uh, uh, this pick this kind of 90 degree on the end and I'm going to turn it until it clicks and there it is it clicked into place and I'm going to show you so you can see the cylinder there it is all nice nice up in this little cog and uh, it's all happy now so you've got both second and third gear on the main shaft and they're locked into place and here I'm just kind of showing you that they're locked into place. 
So now let's talk about assembling the synchronizing hubs. So on the workbench I have the assembly we just put together. It's the second and third gears on the main shaft. They're locked on. You can see they're there. And laying next to it is the first motion shaft, which is over to the right there. And here is the third and fourth gear synchronizing hub with the balk rings, the little springs, the balls. And uh, we're going to talk about how to put that together and how to put it on the assembly. And then here's the first and, first and second gear synchronizing hub and actually first gear. So let's move on and talk about how to put these together. So now we want to talk about putting together the third, fourth synchronizer hub. And you'll see it has a specific way it goes together where these little gear teeth that I'm pointing out align with the synchronizing ring uh, in a certain way. In fact, I'm going to blow this up for you here right about now and so that you can see how they align. And so just align them where those teeth on the hub and the missing teeth on the ring go together. You can't really mess that up if you just align that up. Uh, and you know, so they should all line up evenly and they should slide in and out real real simply and then the hub itself has uh, a, a hole for Each of the three springs. So here's how I go about this now. Everybody's got their own little tricks uh, I've uh, seen over the years and But here's how I do it. I put the springs in the hub and then I dab a bit of grease on each one of the springs, okay? And that grease is going to be to secure the balls just momentarily while I put a zip tie around them. So what you'll notice is that you can take a moment here now and align this properly and slide it in and the hub will rest on to the ring. It won't actually fall down in there because the springs are going to keep it from from going through. Now you see I made a quick adjustment there so I'm making sure it's aligned perfectly the way it's supposed to be aligned with the gears on the hub aligning with the missing internal gears on on the uh, ring. Now I've stepped away momentarily because I went to go get a zip tie some people call these cable ties uh, a variety of names get you one big enough to fit around the whole thing and then you're just going to be patient here and very carefully uh, put the zip tie around the balls so I'm kind of sizing it up here and then I'm going to get the balls and I'm going to slip them in and stick them on the grease so that they'll stay there and they might wiggle around on you a little bit. You might knock one off. You just have to be patient here. Uh, you know, working on these gearboxes is a is a test of your patience, and so you can't get in a rush. Everything is machined to fit together. If you try to force something, it's just going to frustrate you. So just be patient with it. Go slow and deliberate, and you'll be fine. Uh, I see I'm kind of lining little balls, taking my time aligning up the uh, uh, cable tie and trying to get it all kind of happy slowly tightening the cable tie as I go here and the idea is to compress the balls against those springs down into the hub at least as far as the cable tie will will uh, allow you to go and you see I dropped one there but that's okay just be patient and uh, sorry it's a little bit out of the camera view there but I, I'll uh, I'll maybe adjust that for us but uh, just keep uh, keep going until you feel pretty confident uh, you can get the springs kind of mashed down in there you see I'm having to move another one there but uh, I get them and I'm purposely showing this to you because I want you to know that nothing happens real magically, okay? So it's not like, not like I, I'm editing this, you know, the things that I, I uh, deal with out. 
So there, see I finally, finally I think I've got things aligned. You just have to be patient. I moved the cable tie around just a little bit there. And uh, I think we're just about there. So I'm gonna, gonna snug it down. And then I'm gonna get my handy dandy cable tie t a gun. And I'm gonna tighten it up really good here. And cut the cable tie off and there there we have it and I want to show you what this looks like so I'm going to zoom in so you see that the cable tie the zip tie is holding the springs in place and they've got it compressed now it's not compressed far enough to push the hub into to the synchronizing ring but it is holding them in, in, in place now a lot of folks will do this whole operation inside a box or inside a, a plastic bag or something so that if the springs and, and balls get away from you you don't shoot them across the shop and be chasing them and, and lose them uh, but uh, if you use the cable tie you don't have a lot of problems now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it just a really small screwdriver and uh, the idea here is just to put pressure on the hub uh, and slowly compress uh, the springs, the little balls, back up into the hub just enough so that they will slip down into the ring and you'll see this doesn't happen like this this attempt that I did here didn't happen like instantaneously okay I had to go around a few times and kinda get the pressure just right and work those balls in and uh, just kinda work it a little bit here again it's a, it's a test of patience here but if you just keep at it uh, here in just a moment it will just kind of slip down into its proper location so just bear with me momentarily and it's gonna slip into place I'm gonna let you just kind of watch me here momentarily so you can see what I'm doing just using the little screwdriver here to press the balls and then I'm mashing down with my other hand on the hub itself so that it will hold the ball in place. Okay, I don't quite have it there. You see it clicked in. There it is in place. Okay, so now the hub is in place and the balls are in their little detent ring, inside detent inside the ring. And it's, it's a little sticky right now because it's all newly put together. There's no oil in it other than just that little bit of grease. But you'll see it will now function properly. Now you got to be real careful doing what I'm doing here because if you slip it too far, the balls and, and will shoot across the, the shop. And so uh, there you have it. So now we're going to talk about the first and second gear synchronizing hub in you need to pay close attention here because there are some things here that will cause you some heartache and I've got some things that I do to help me from having those heartaches. The first thing is I'm holding the first gear ring and synchronizer ring and, and uh, gear itself and I'm pausing here to point out that there is a one gear on the inside of this ring that is shaved down and you need to mark it. Uh, this is what I do. I mark that entire shaved down gear. Now only half of it's shaved down but I mark it all the way across this ring. So I wanted to pause here and have you do that uh, because it's very important. You see I marked it all the way across on both sides and there it is. That's the missing tooth so look for that on the gear and mark it mark it really good all the way from one side of the ring to the other okay and so that's the first tip that will if you will do that it'll save you some heartache now you need to do the same thing on the hub itself now what you're looking for here is there's a place for all the three springs to go that are in the in uh, the location I'm pointing out there, that location, but the, there's one of them that has a second hole right next to it, and I paused. That's the hole you need to mark. I want you to just take a marker and mark where that one 
is located. The other three holes are where the spring goes, springs go. But that other one is where the little detent uh, pin goes, and you need to line that up really well. So you see I've marked that second hole there. And what this allows you to do is to not mess this up. And so if you'll mark both the ring and the hub, and then you can align them properly and you won't accidentally get them off a little bit. And so that way you always know kind of where you are. Okay. And I'm going to show you about the orientation here in a minute. But now, now the second thing, uh, the next thing we're going to do is just the same exercise we did on the uh, third and fourth gear uh, synchronizing hub. But uh, you have to uh, uh, basically do, this, do the same thing. You're going to put the springs in and you're going to mount uh, mount that onto the hub and use a, a cable tie uh, and so you'll notice that I have the three balls there but you also see that little bullet shaped cylinder it's rounded on both ends it's laying there you know that's the little detent uh, the first gear detent uh, uh, cylinder uh, that has to go in that hole that you marked okay and uh, you're going to put that in there here momentarily, or at least I do here momentarily. In fact, I think I might have forgot to put it in. I had to go back and put it in. So we'll see if I remember to pick it up and put it in here in the video. But uh, so I've got, I've got that uh, uh, all lined up and ready to go. Now all I have to do is line up my uh, marks there. And... Uh, you know, in this case, I put the balls on after I put the grease on. You know, you could you could set it down. The springs are going to hold it up uh, from falling all the way down anyway. And so you see, I've already knocked off one of the little balls. So I got ahead of myself and putting the little balls on there. Uh, but I would uh, normally just sort of set that down in there and let the springs hold it, and then set the balls on there just like that. And you'll notice that I have forgotten to put that little detent. Uh, uh, cylinder in there and I go here I'm going like oops wait a minute uh, oh I gotta pull it back out and stick that in there see see I did forget it but that's why I kind of lay all these parts out together so I don't uh, accidentally forget one because that would uh, totally not work uh, properly if you left that out so by the fact that I have those marks on there see I can make that mistake and then uh, you know, go back and put it back together and uh, collect all my little balls, put them back in the little grease uh, that I put on the springs. And and then now I'm just going to go about my, my cable tie business uh, and, uh, you know, same thing I did before. And uh, this goes pretty quickly here once you get this all lined up. And uh, I, I think this one actually goes a good bit faster than it did on the video I have on the uh, earlier section on the third, fourth uh, uh, synchronizing hub. So I'm doing the same operation I did before, slowly tightening it up, kind of mashing the balls in as I do it and tightening it up. You see I kind of got it all pretty quickly there, didn't lose any of the balls. And I tightened it up and I'm going to kind of show you this here briefly. And then I'm going to pause here and show you one more thing. Now, I want you to pay attention to the orientation. If you get this ring with the gear on it upside down, you're going to be very unhappy. So I want you to pay attention to the orientation of where the notch is on the hub and the direction I have the gear. You can put that thing on upside down. Don't do that. Okay? So that's why I pause there, and that's just a good reference for you. Now all I'm going to do is, uh, uh, you know, do my little exercise where I mash the balls in with my screwdriver and push down on the hub with my, the palm of my hand. And I think it pops in really quick here. Uh, yep, yeah, there it went, right there, first, first try. It just kind of popped in. Uh, sometimes it goes easy and sometimes, uh, sometimes you have to work like I did on the third, third fourth synchronizer hub. But this one's in. It happened uh, really simply there. 
and uh, there you have it and that is in the correct orientation and uh, it's a fully functional deal there I picked up a, a bulk ring and set it in there so you can see uh, how that synchronizes into second gear so now we want to put the whole assembly together and the first thing we're going to do is take the first second gear synchronizing hub put a bulk ring in it and slide it on now the bulk ring goes up against second gear because that's the synchronizer for second gear and if you put it on the other way it won't it'll go but it, it's not obviously going to operate correctly because uh, you won't have a synchronizer there then you can install the first motion shaft now don't forget your your bearing or your bushing okay now that will go right on the other end but going in between is the third and fourth uh, synchronizing hub that you put together and it goes one way and one way only uh, and I want to show you that orientation right now so this is the side that faces third gear and it's you know doesn't have you, you'll notice it's different from the other side here's the other side you see how that sort of sticks out that is the side that faces the first motion shaft and fourth gear so put it on the correct way you can see how I'm putting it on here this is how it goes and you know it should just slide right on once you get it lined up and get the bulk rings in there on both sides the, the synchronizing rings they call them bulk rings but they're synchronizing rings and there you have it a complete uh, main shaft first motion shaft assembly uh, this is the main drive line coming from your uh, uh, crankshaft uh, to your uh, prop shaft and so congratulations so look for part two coming up pretty quick where we're going to put all the bits that we just assembled and other, everything else into the case and get a fully functional gearbox and uh hey don't forget to subscribe bye